Paul Heyman because Paul Heyman, if he was in charge of WWE, he would have enough competent, capable guys around him to handle the financial aspect of it. And Heyman could just be head of creative, and he would make sure everything between NXT, between WWE. I mean, I would almost guarantee Paul Heyman would have some sort of NXT invasion. Mm-hmm. Like, on some level. Mm-hmm. I, I think you'd have to have that, and I think they'd go after John Cena right away. And I think that would be a really cool storyline. Uh, I think Heyman has such a good vision and such a good method of branding people. Like, that's basically all he's been doing since the end, since he left uh, SmackDown. And by the way, his SmackDown run is still one of the best runs of WWE TV that they've ever had. Like, right. if you look SmackDown right. 2002 to 2004 or 5-ish, SmackDown was on point. SmackDown was on point. That's where you had Edge, Eddie Guerrero, Brock Lesnar, Kurt Angle, like, all those guys. Because Heyman can recognize talent, and he can use it. You can he can utilize it effectively while hiding weaknesses. Do you think we would hate the idea of Roman Reigns now if Heyman was running WWE? No, no, no. no. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. Wheels. I think your internet's recovered. What do you got in mind? Uh, I hope it's recovered. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with Steve Austin. Okay, he's good. I mind. think he's okay. He, he's Smart enough to know he's worked many companies and seen the inner workings of all of them to go kind of almost like a Paul Heyman and go, that'll work, that won't work. Especially like the Roman Reigns is. And uh, he knows the attitude Eric won't work in this day and age, but he can tweak it to where you kind of have attitude error, but it won't piss off the sponsors and the investors and everything in WWE. So I think Austin would be a great leader of the company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, my only, yeah, yeah, I, I see that. And I think he's, he's, I guess, proven enough business sense to at least get himself out there. So I think that'd be great. Um, so we got a few people on the line now uh, as well. Uh, let's go check in with our friend Eamon, of course, of Inspire Pro, the announcer down there in Texas, as well as my co-host over on the Indie Mayhem Show, where we'll be talking to Colin Delaney here in a little bit. Uh, Eamon, what do you think about the big question? Who would you uh, like to see uh, as a big takeover replacing Vince McMahon right now in WWE? No. Now, when you said that, when, when the question was originally posed, I had my idea of how I kind of wanted to go with it. And then you guys sort of like took it one direction. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to go with the way I thought of it. Okay. Um, this person probably wouldn't be great from like a business perspective, mm-hmm. but as like running the shows, kind of being the, the final say. Right. And, and I think that's the thing. We, there's a distinction. Like Vince doesn't run financials. Right. He yeah. Is, he's the sh- I, I, he's the showrunner. Right. I mean, he's the figurehead yeah. slash showrunner. He just kind of owns everything because he's the guy that's been there. You know. And and this this answer is going to be controversial. Uh, so what? I will take a minute for you guys to go what or be surprised right. or whatever oh. Let's get ready for this before I explain. Right. Um, my answer would be Vince Russo. <gasps> Oh, wow. Um, oh. I think the biggest problem with WWE TV today is that it is so boring. Mm-hmm. One of the things that whatever you want to say about Russo, you know, his stuff in TNA or in WCW, his run in, in WWF uh, until 99, the one thing that I think people love about the Attitude Era and the one thing that people don't talk a lot about about what was good about the Attitude Era was that every show was different. No, but there's no repeating yourself. There's no Adam Rose and the Bunny having dissension for nine straight months. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they don't have anything for them, and they're just filling time. Yeah. Well, I, I just, I just have a question for your, for your selection, Eamon. Mm-hmm. Russo also never had to book eight hours of TV. That's true. This yeah. would also be in a world where you know they would have some stuff like that narrowed down and he would and but you know, they would he focus. was he was also the guy that single-handedly or along with uh ferrera uh booked at least four hours of tv themselves 
Yeah, and I think one because I apparently like documented was one of the issues as to why he left for WCW was because they had just started SmackDown right. and they wanted him to book more TV with no increase in pay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, 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 this would obviously be in a world where certain things would be narrowed down and stuff like that. But I feel like I wouldn't be falling asleep on Monday nights. Right. Right. I, I would be at least interested. Like I would right. be. Some of it would be really good, and some of it probably would be really bad, but at least it would be interesting. And right. and I want that in WWE, WWE's main product, at least, so badly right now. Right. And I feel like Vin, Vin Russo, that was was one of his biggest qualities. All right, we also got on the line the man behind our Mayhem Mania that caps off the show usually. Uh, it's Mainstream Matt. Matt Carlin, so what do you think of the big question? What's up there, Sork? Hey, everybody. I, I just... I love all your answers, guys, but you're just not thinking big enough. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking – when I'm trying to think of somebody to seize control of WWE from okay. now into the infinite forever, I need someone who can think long-term, someone who is a proven long-term storyteller, someone who can plan years and years and years in advance, and to find a person like that – Frankly, you won't find someone like that working in professional wrestling. So I look outside of the industry, oh. and I replace Vince McMahon with perhaps someone – perhaps there is no one more beloved in all the realms of geekdom than this man. Indeed, the mastermind of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I would oh. hire Kevin Feige to run WWE. Oh, oh, wow. Sorry, this oh man wow. Can play. This I man can weave multiple storylines. This guy can handle small TV projects, big TV projects. This guy can do it all. He can do no wrong. This is the man you want. WWE is no longer a professional wrestling company. Hell, Vince tells you that all the time, and you guys always ignore him. WWE is a universe. And you need a man who can handle the universe. Oh, wow. Big Kev. Hire him. You like that idea now. Wow. You got to make Hawkeye look strong. <laughs> got to make Hawkeye look strong. Wow. Uh, I'm like, what's he going to do? Is he going to say J.J. Abrams? Is he going to say uh, <laughs> William uh, Shatner? <laughs> um, you know, who's the Buffy guy? Um, Josh Whedon. Josh, he's Josh Whedon. You know, uh, but no, oh. no, I'm with you on that. Um, you know, I... I I'm I'm tossing up so many names here, and um, and I, I want to keep it in the industry for for this idea, um, but now I have so many options. Al Alex Carr's in the chat room is saying either Justin Lamar or Mike Quackenbush. That could be interesting. Could be interesting, um, but uh, I'm going to have to go finally with for real, Jr. Jim Ross. Ooh, Ooh I don't know about that. You don't know about that? The tampon spots are ruining the business. <laughs> we're gonna, get, we're gonna get a lot. Sorry, we're gonna get a lot of twenty minutes draws. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Um, I mean, is that the feeling you get from his podcast? If you listen to a bunch of that, you know, I mean, he's very critical of the business. His podcast you know. is very cynical. But it is very cynical. But I, I am kind of curious what would happen. He's had the book for a bit some places right like did he ever in wcw for a minute or at least I don't or think he ever had the book never had the book but i he think was, i think he could do he some fun stuff with bring in talent. right 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 you start to bring in talent but i don't think he ever was on the booking committee but i think he's somebody with enough in-depth knowledge of wrestling that he could be a good one for it um secondarily Mike, but if I can do a second pick, if that's okay, guys, I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know, Mike. You're you're the you're the roller of the of the I, big question. This I week. will I will allow it, Sor, All considering right. you literally can turn off my mic whenever you. That's true. I have a knob <laughs> right here. Um, uh, Mick Foley, I think it would be interesting. Mm. I think it would be interesting. He's a, he's a very creative person, obviously, um, and to see him kind of you know work in that, um, you know, I'm surprised he's not an agent, to be honest. Mm, I don't think he wants. Sure. Right, right. I think. I, well, I think. It, I think it's the. You know. Yes. I didn't realize he had like more kids just to have more kids. So he has young kids again. You know. I was just like, okay. 
Anyways, um, with that, let's know what you think of the big question as well. Uh, our prize this week, hashtag is WMS Big Question and at Mayhem Show. Uh, and you will have a chance to win Vicious Outcast Wrestling's January Jackpot featuring uh, TNA's Davey Richards was on that show uh, last month. And I was just actually visited uh, VOW for their uh, February Freeze event down in Connellsville. It was a lot of fun. A lot of friends of the show involved with that. Uh, they, got a, they got a great thing going on there. Uh, but this digital download can be yours. And otherwise, you can pick it up for $7.99 over on uh, SorgatronMedia.com slash store, PittsburghWrestling.com. A uh, great group down there, Vicious Outcast Wrestling, that we uh, support with digital downloads as well. So go, please. Uh, let us know. Who do you who would you like to see take over for Vince McMahon? Hashtag WMS Big Question. And this week, uh, last week, we had the big question, and the prize was uh, Best of CM Punk in IWC Volume 1. And we did get a response from bum, bum, EW Planet on the Twitter. It says the problem. No, and the question was, uh, would the Royal Rumble reactions... Uh, be what they were if it wasn't for D- Daniel Bryan being in WWE. If we had no D- Daniel Bryan, would we have the reactions to Royal Rumble that we've been talking about for the last two years now with the Royal Rumble? And uh, EW Planet says, the problem with the Rumble uh, would have been worse without Daniel. Got to make Bray look strong somehow. Am I right? Uh, so there <laughs> you go. Uh, let us know. And, and like I said, this week, January Jackpot, J.B. Richards is the prize. Um, so, Mark, I have a question. Yes. Can LB win this week? LB can win this week because he didn't participate. Can so I have another question? Yes. When you refer to the prize, can you try to say it like Kevin Owens? How's how's he <laughs> say it? I can't even pretend to do it, but <laughs> so you have that, to do that, a Canadian. That, that French Canadian, 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 Canadian English accent like is like super. A legitimate, like, the prize. The yeah. prize. I, I don't know. I'm just adding something. That, that's just French. French. I think I'm just really the prize. Just the prize. Just pretend you're the mountain. That's Montreal, just right? You got to put the in there. The, the prize. prize. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat>